So what, what uh, in, the, in the chemical context, what solvents get used for? We talked about uh, being able to mix chemicals with each other. So you brought up uh, extraction, so dichloromethane gets uh, very commonly used to extract, preferentially extract one chemical from another. Um, azeotropic distillation, we'll talk a little bit more about azeotropes in a bit. This, this comes up when you're trying to purify a liquid out of a, a mixture of liquids. So what happens is that if you have two Liquid, two liquids with different boiling points, there ends up oftentimes being a, um, a fraction, a um, certain percentage of solvent A, certain percentage of solvent B, where that mixture has a lower boiling point. And so uh, you can save some energy by um, doing your, your distillation at that fraction, but then the, the drawback is that you have a mixture of those two solvents and you can't really change that fraction. And so why, why I'm bringing this up at all is because solvent recycling is a huge issue for a lot of these industries. So if you're running a pharmaceutical synthesis, you don't want to use a, a you know, fresh uh, virgin batch of solvent every time you make your, your ingredient. You want to be able to capture it at the end of the process and, and put it back in. And if you're forming azeotropes with other things that are getting used in there, then now you have to worry about impure uh, solvents getting used. Crystallization is another uh, important area for pharmaceuticals in particular that um, you often want to have very uh, high purity crystalline forms of a material and so solvents are used to help uh, either template the crystal in the, in the right form or help it come out of solution. So using uh, two different solvents that leads into this next one, make something come out of solution. And then washing is another huge thing. So. Um, if you have byproducts, sometimes you can use a solvent to wash out the byproduct selectively. And then just in general in mixing, so it's very difficult to mix uh, two solid materials or two viscous liquids, so adding something like one of these solvents that has very low viscosity can uh, make your processing a lot easier. And, and I was just looking at all of those <coughs> uses and I was looking around the room and I was trying to see if I could name anything in this room <laughs> that hasn't been touched by solvent at some point in its life cycle. And I'm coming up with absolutely <laughs> nothing. I mean, if anybody can, can come up with something that, oh, this hasn't been touched by solvent, then help me out because really, I'm, I've got nothing. It's that ubiquitous. It's pretty difficult to come up with examples. And so I, I wanna go back, hopefully this diagram looks familiar. Um, Basically the principle of how a solvent works a lot of times is that it's in fact acting in a, in a way like a catalyst. It's either um, it's raising the energy of your, your uh, starting material so you have less uh, of a barrier to get over to get to your final products. It could be lowering the energy of your products and it could be actually reducing that kinetic barrier. And so the way it's doing that, it's actually behaving like a catalyst would. It's interacting with the raw materials in some reversible way. So there's um, you know, generally some sort of non-covalent interaction. So you're, you're actually a a adjusting the way the, the molecule is perceiving its environment. And that can happen at either the front end of the reaction, in the transition states, or at the end of the reaction. So I think it, it's pretty helpful to think of the solvent in a way as a catalyst. But yeah. What you end up seeing, though, is that the, the amounts of solvents used compared to what you would conventionally think of as a catalyst are uh, you know, basically the other end of the extreme. So. Exactly. And I'd just say another way of saying that is so many wide range of, uh, of chemicals reacting are in solid form. Not, not all, but a large percentage are in solid form. If I put these two solids together and I mix them, are they going to react? What do you think? Are they going to react? So we know that uh, they, they are inclined to react, but in solid form, are they going to react? The short answer is yes, but extremely slowly. The reason that step one of uh, almost every synthetic method is dissolve in solvent is because of exactly what Evan's talking about, uh, uh, that it is this type of essentially catalytic effect, uh, just not in the ways that we've maybe traditionally thought of catalysts.